What's going on guys? Welcome back to Gutter Fighting Secrets YouTube Premier World War II Combatives and Everything Self-Defense channel. Today what we're going to be focusing on is a little bit more Gracie Combative stuff. We're going to be looking at the full Nelson. Now what is the full Nelson? Don't worry about that right now. I'm about to show you that. <laughs> but I, I have the feeling you're going to like this guys. So stand by right after this ad we're going to come in we're gonna really light it up well, guys thank you for checking out the YouTube channel definitely is a, a project and a passion of ours we uh, freaking honestly appreciate each and every one of you guys who subscribes now um, I want to highly encourage you guys to check out the gutter fighting combatives DVD it honestly is the easiest way to learn this stuff and it's not only old-school commando training it's also new relevant techniques that are gonna keep you safe out there in this crazy world Jen do you have Anything to say about the Gutter Fighting Combatives DVD itself? Yeah, I found it really simple, easy to pick up. You can learn in a few hours, and you don't need to be an athlete to do it. Yeah, and that's that's true, guys. I mean, you, you don't need to study this stuff for 10-plus years and get your black belt and uh, chop them up Kwon Do. You really just need to get some solid training, and it all starts with learning the basics and learning the foundation, which are all over at GutterFightingSecrets.com. And you can get that uh, Combatives DVD ship right to your doorstep. Very easy, very simple. Now, with that being said, check out the rest of the video, and I hope you enjoy it. What the hell are you looking at? I think I know what they're looking at. <laughs> it's my charming face. All right, so um, the full Nelson, this is something that uh, you see a lot, honestly. And you'll see it a lot in, like, everything from, like, little playground bully fights to, like, barroom brawls, right? One guy gets in a fight, his uh, his buddy comes up behind, and he goes, oh, someone's beating my friend up. And they go ahead and they throw him in a full Nelson like this, okay? Now, you guys wanna just take a look here. My fingers, they either are, usually they're gonna be interlaced behind, the arms are gonna be kind of up, and a lot of people get really um, kind of tweaked out and like, what do I do from this position? Mm -hmm. It's such a common thing that you would think that Self-defense guys would kind of train it more, but it's it's not trained enough in my opinion. A lot of times what you're gonna hear is, oh, stomp on the foot, or like mm. BS stuff, like, oh, uh, stomp their 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 testicles with the with the heel, right? Mm. Guys, I'm, I'm telling you, like, go ahead and, and stomp my foot, and try to stomp my testicles. <laughs> okay, it, you, you, get, you get the point. Like, it's, it's not that simple. I wish it no. was. But and you can toss me around easily because you have control. I can toss you around, and that's I'm glad you brought that up. I can toss you around, and guys, what really makes this very dangerous is the fact that I want you to take a look here. This is what's called right here the cervical spine area, all right? Um, we see this injured a lot in like car accidents and things like that where there's trauma brought to this area. One thing that's dangerous about this is if I'm really pressing down on her neck here on her head and forcing her neck back, but not really giving it enough play, it can really start to destroy and really hurt the cervical spine area. It's very dangerous. It's not just one of those things, oh, it's annoying hold, and someone can punch your stomach from the front. Like, yes, that's true, but also it's serious. Mm -hmm. So we need to have a serious option to address this serious situation, destroy the enemy's will to fight with close combat. So what we're gonna be doing is first of all, like I said, this is a very dangerous thing because they can start hurting your cervical spine. And I don't know about you, but if anybody's ever trying to do me dirty like that, I'm gonna annihilate them with 10 times more force than they were willing to bring upon me. Destroy the enemy with close, what? Combat. There you go. That's why I have her around. She knows what's going on. So first thing she's gonna wanna do is take her hands and put them on her forehead. Now notice her grip here. Let's go towards the camera a little bit more. Notice her grip, all right? It doesn't matter if you do this, it doesn't matter if you do this, it doesn't matter if you do this, as long as you're bracing your forehead so that when I come behind here and start pressing, are you ready? Mm -hmm. You sure? Mm -hmm. When I come behind here and start pressing, guys, I'm, I go to the gym, all right? I don't take you know steroids like Hulk Hogan, but I go to the gym, I'm pretty strong. I'm not able to do much. Now, what she's gonna do next, face out. Okay, recover. I want you to just be aware of those two things that we did, okay? Mm -hmm. Number one, we're coming up here. We want to make sure that they're not able to hurt our C-spine. Mm -hmm. Number two, we're basing out, okay? In a previous video that I did about the bear hug, I explained the fright position as it relates to combat, close combat maneuvers that I was learning when training in Israel. And this is really important. 
their whole thing in Israel, the Israeli, one of the Israeli doctrines when it comes to close combat, and this is more for shooting and stuff, but it, we're, I was thinking she was going to finish my sentence for me, but she's no. not that good. <laughs> oh, I got to be careful because I'm training her for what? <laughs> to close. Oh. It's a close quarter combat. Ah, all right. So um, one of the big things that they talk about a lot is uh, the fright position. So ah! I couldn't fright her. Do it to me. I don't care. Do oh! <laughs> and that's, what, that's generally what happens is it's kind of a flinch reaction. And yeah. you're, you base out. It's right? You get low to the ground. And this is almost like what? A makeshift kind of what stance? Anchor? Wrestling stance. Oh, wrestling. Right? So uh, she's not on it today. I but need my coffee. I need to buy her more coffee. By the way, guys, if you love, secretly love Starbucks coffee, but you hate their calming politics, then this is the channel for you. Keep watching. All right, so this is the fright reaction. I want you to just start thinking about basing out so that the reason we're basing out is when I do this and she starts doing this, I might get really upset and kind of say, they're ruining it and try to toss her around a little bit, right? right? But if you base out, it's a lot harder to toss her around. Again, I'm really trying to toss her and I'm not able to. So what do we want to start doing next? We can't just sleep here, right? This is not like, can't hang out and say, oh, I'll buy you a beer. Like, no. <laughs> truce. <laughs> yeah, no, there's no truce there's here. There's no truce here. Right? <laughs> not yet, not until you go ahead and do these next couple of things. <laughs> After you destroy the enemy with close combat, you can offer a truce but it's gonna be coming from a position of what? Strength. All right. Base. All right, now after she bases, I want her to think about putting her elbows straight to the ground. Oh, all right, mm -hmm. we're coming. Now notice, she's not coming here and keeping them wide. That would be using a lot of lats, that would be using a lot of muscle, and if the guy's really, really, really strong, you could go and do this and only get so far. Yeah, it doesn't break the grip. No, no, not at all, right? Mm -hmm. But if you go ahead and full Nelson, base, if you go ahead and keep your elbows tight and start pushing your elbows down to the ground, this is a lot better. Not to mention the fact that the lock is gonna be a little bit tighter. And even if they're me, base, elbows. All right, see how fast that was? as opposed to the other method. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and keep them wide. Okay. Ah, if I was really upset, I might not let her get it. But right? you feel you can injure yourself. I can tell the shoulders, yeah. Now do it with the elbows in. Okay. Okay, see how fast that was? <coughs> Absolutely a game changer, guys. Elbows down versus elbows out. Elbows down mm -hmm. is always what you want, in this case. Next thing she's going to want to start thinking about doing after she's got those elbows down is controlling me to some degree. Mm -hmm. Now, she's going to want to go ahead and take a cross side grip. What's a cross side grip? So you take the arm across that. Across diagonally. from you and you hold it tight. Now. Grab a wrist, yeah. all right? She's going to want to start thinking about now is grabbing a wrist mm -hmm. and what's next? Turn. Turn in. But as in. we turn in, we can either throw an elbow strike towards right. the trachea we can throw a chop towards the throat, mm -hmm. and then what? Knee. Knee strike, mm -hmm. one of our favorite things of all time. <laughs> knee strike to the groin. Right, so one more time, mm -hmm. we're gonna go through this. We're gonna break it down by the one, two, threes. Okay. In other words, by the numbers, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you guys who have been in the um, British military might be aware of when they say, by the numbers, all right, guys. One, she's gonna go ahead. Mm -hmm. Two, she's gonna base three, elbows down, four, cross grip, ah, and then boom, to the groin, and in that case, she ran into the wall. <laughs> but, <laughs> hey, stuff happens, honestly, if you run into the wall, um, just make sure when you come back, hit him again. Yeah. All right? Just kick you kick, <laughs> kick him when he's down, that's what Farrah would have said, so, all right? Hey, by the way, um, did you ever see that movie where... <laughs> <laughs> all right, she actually got me that time, like it. <laughs> but it's a good thing I've been hit a lot, all right? So, you, you can see. You panic. Like, <laughs> I do I was like, oh my God. But you can see um, that, honestly, I'm glad that happened because you can see that one strike, and she got me literally right in the temple, guys. Yeah, it was the temple with the elbow. One little elbow strike is not going to do it, okay? So, like, when we train self-defense and we train these things, you'll see in Krav Maga classes, they go, 
Acha to the, and then the guy goes, oh, and then Acha to the balls, and he goes, oh. Guys, I've been in a lot. I've been in a lot of fights. Okay, like many, many fights. Not to exaggerate, not to make myself sound more than I am, but I know what I'm doing, and that I'm telling experience. you that this doesn't always do it. Okay, mm. that's why we always work in multiples of three. Mm. So we're throwing the elbow, we're chopping to the throat, and we're going for a knee. After that, we're expecting the guy to keep coming at us. Mm -hmm. We're always expecting that those three strikes didn't do, pardon my language, didn't do anything. And then um, we're always ready to follow up, follow up, follow up. That's why when I say you've turned on that machine, you're a machine. You're a fighting your machine. You're a combat machine. When you've turned it on, there's no turning it off until you're well away from the situation. You need to be willing to destroy completely this enemy with close combat. Destroy him and destroy his will to fight. And by destroying his will to fight, what I mean is destroying him. So, just because she got me with that little elbow, if I was seriously upset, you see it did nothing. Yeah. It got me pretty good, but it but did nothing. But I had nothing. to continue to like attack you and, and get if, away. If yeah. you're going to throw one, throw three, and if you're going to throw three, throw six, and if you're going to throw six, be willing to throw 12, all right? So, one more time. I'm gonna get her in the full Nelson. That's my threat. <laughs> so she bases out, okay? Bases. She's not letting me destroy her C-spine. Then she's gonna go ahead and put her elbow straight down. All right, and she managed to finally get it off. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't going easy on you. No! <laughs> then I want you to go ahead and take a cross grip onto the wrist. As you turn in, throw an elbow, boom, okay, and then what? Ha! <laughs> okay, boom, good. And this way. <laughs> and you notice that last time, she actually threw a um, uh, forearm into the throat. She pushed me back. She physically pushed me back because she realized I need a little space here. I do, yeah. I can't rely on a little silly chop, no. right? Because unless you've been training your chops like a lot and mm -hmm. you really know the exact proportions of body weight, mm -hmm. and that's why I say, guys, what we practice and what I show you guys from Fairburn about this stuff, train that stuff it's not to like sit there and look pretty it's not to like waste your time or busy work it's literally so that you know the exact proportions and the exact amount of body weight that you're distributing at the individual you don't get that by watching these videos you get that by training these little patterns that Fairburn and Sykes and Applegate even and men who have gone into combat have laid down the principles for us to train these things. And then I sit here and I tell you, hey, you need to train the way that you fight. And if you're not sitting there at home and saying, okay, well, let me feel how it feels to give a chop and feel, you know, how much body weight do I need to distribute? Do I need to be placing my foot a little more or a little less? Mm -hmm. These details. Mm -hmm. And when we're in the fight, when we're in the scramble, we know I need to go this hard. Right. I need to go harder than this. But if you haven't been doing that stuff, guys, it's like they say, when you if you can't tie a knot, mm -hmm. tie a lot. Oh. Well, if you can't fight, push them away right, right. and run away. Yes. And that's exactly what she did. She knew that. We've been training a lot, and she's getting a lot, lot better. Okay, guys, she's getting to be a lethal weapon here. And she's going to show some, a lot of you up, quite <laughs> frankly. So I train? unless you want to be shown up by this small blind girl, like, <laughs> I should just you get on your stuff. <laughs> anyway, guys, um, that was the Gracie Cabada's way of uh, destroying a full Nelson from behind. It really is important. Just remember that whenever someone's got you in that full Nelson, don't let them get that C-spine and really hurt you, okay? This is one of the more important parts of it. Then I really want you to focus on bring your elbows in and down. Get that cross grip. Now, as we're turning into them, we're either throwing an elbow or, better yet, a chop to the throat. After we go ahead and do that, we're facing the enemy. We need to go ahead and throw some kind of a strike to start taking them out of the fight. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, that's usually going to be a knee strike to the groin. If you miss the groin, go for the bladder area. If you miss the bladder, go for the stomach, go for the ribs. Mm -hmm. Get them with a knee and get them with a hard knee. Are you doing the kidneys? Whatever you Whatever. can get, honestly. But just realize once you get that knee off, okay, so we've cross grip, mm -hmm. we've turned in, we've chopped, we've gone ahead and gone for a knee. Okay, what do we do here? Maybe another elbow. Maybe we push our fingers into some eyes. Maybe we go ahead and do whatever it is, but we need three strikes in fast succession, really hard. And then we need to be ready to follow those up immediately 
with even more violence. All right, guys, I appreciate you watching. Violence is the name of the game here. Don't be prey, okay? Be the wolf, be the sheepdog. Until next time, please remember that you are your first and last line of defense and- Don't be scared, be prey. Be scared, be dead. <laughs>